Hello, it's Deborah from The Attic. Today we're going to be playing with a product that is new to me. It's been on the market for a few months, I think. It's from a company called Stamperia. It's called Cream Paste. And to use it, you use these texture impression moulds. There are a number of these available. I haven't used this one. This has got some uh, butterflies on it. And I'm going to show you how you can use uh, the paste and the moulds and then we're going to see how we can colour it up and what we might be able to make once we've got the beautiful deep impressions. The tub has a foil seal on it which protects the contents in transit and you need some kind of a spatula. I'm just using uh, one that I, I had in my, my toolkit somewhere but you could use uh, whatever you have and when you layer it on, it goes on very smooth. It's very, it's very loose. It's a very loose sort of paste. It goes on really easily actually. And because the, this mold is quite deep, I hope you can see the depth on that, maybe three, maybe four millimeters deep. It's good that it's so easy to go on, you don't have to work at it to make it get into all of those nooks and crannies. You need to apply it quite generously and I'll show you why when I show you the effect once it's dried. For the moment I'm just trying to concentrate on getting it in all of the little indentations. I'm going to add another layer on the top. This is where you want to be generous. Don't be too mean and scrimpy when you're applying the paste because you need it to have a background that you can then peel away. That's that one done. I'm going to knock off the, the little bit that was left on my spatula back into the pot that can be reused and I hope you can see how much of the pot I've used to fill one of these. I reckon you will get maybe four perhaps five of these moulds from one pot. And now this goes aside to dry and I leave them to dry overnight. These are some moulds that I've done previously and I wanted to show you how they come out. Now this bit around the edge here this is where it needs to be applied, the paste needs to be applied thickly because it's actually the background that holds the front texture in place. If you apply it too thinly, what will happen is, here's a good example, this has got very little holding it onto the back and when I had to, when I was trying to get this out of the mould, I had, uh, this bit actually came free. Can you see that that's just popped free of the background. So the um, first of all you need to make sure you get the cream paste into all of the tiny little nooks and crannies and then you need to go over with another layer on the top to make sure there's enough there to hold the front elements all together. Of course you can use um, loose elements to your advantage and I'll show you that as well in a moment. This is another example this is beautiful lace. The other thing that's great about this stuff is it's flexible. So that will curve. I think it feels a little like latex and I wonder if that's what's at the, at the basis of the, uh, of the cream paste. But this is great. I really, I really like that mould. There are two here that I haven't released yet and I thought we would do that together so you can see what it's like when it comes away and we'll find out where I've made errors. I think this is probably a little bit too thin on the background. This one looks better. Uh, this one is an impression of uh, some birds. This one is a butterfly. So let's have a go at releasing these. Um, begin by just taking, getting the edges, pop your nail under and press it away from you. And then when you've got a nice chunk that you can get hold of, grab it and then very slowly pull it away. 
can you see that's beginning to come loose you don't need to put anything in the moulds to make sure this release is okay you just use the moulds as they arrive they don't need any special release added to them when you get a little sticky bit like here I have um, a, a letter you can still release it just move the mould around until you can get your your fingernail under the edge of it and then it should come away now I'm making heavy weather of this one because this has not got enough uh, on the background and it's been one of the things that I've learned about using these is just how much you need to apply and that's why I say don't be mean with it because that's what I did and that's why it's going to take me longer to release this but I think it's going to come away okay I go to the next piece the next side and do the same with um, just trying to release the uh, the paste and eventually you'll get enough loose you might lose a little bit on the edges as I will here I think just because I haven't applied enough but you will get to a point where you've got enough that you can grab and then it will tear away really easily that's the whole piece released there are some gaps and this is because of operator error I want to emphasize it's not because of any fault with the uh, impression molds or the paste it's because I didn't put enough on the background and that demonstrates why you need to be generous with it I'm going to release this one next and then I'll show you how they all look this piece is coming away much easier and it's because I added enough to my background So that's the butterfly. Now there is a huge amount of texture on there. It's very deep texture. There's good detail as well so the words have come out really clearly um, and the, the, um, the little indentations in the butterfly wing have come out really very well. Of course there is the bird one that we looked at earlier and there are a couple of things that we could do with this. We could um, because you can see how uh, how flimsy this is here we could if we wanted tear this part away and leave ourselves just with the birds or we could tear away the words so you don't have to use the whole piece in its entirety you can cut it down you can do other things with it the lace obviously we've seen wonderful flexibility on that lace and it looks, again, the detail on that is amazing. It, it really does look like, um, like a piece of lace. I think it's great. And the clock. So the clocks and the gears and all the levers. With the impression moulds, to clean them, just scratch away those little bits. And because this paste is water-based, these should be... Uh, easy to wash. So I'm just taking away anything that I don't really want to go down my sink when I go and wash these out. So I'm just taking away the bits around the edge and then we'll see how easily they wash up with a little bit of soap and water. Here they all are, nicely cleaned up. They, um, they cleaned up really easily actually, not too many difficulties at all. Where it was a little bit more intricate, especially with the lace piece. You can see how clean that is. Um, I just uh, used a, a toothbrush just to get into those little detail bits and wash them away. Um, not my toothbrush, obviously, I use somebody else's. So that's how they scrub up. No problem with any of those. And I found another one which I had drying and this, this was one of my first attempts. You can see how thin my background is. I was really trying to get the most out of my cream paste. But I wanted to show you what I meant about uh, you could take pieces out. So this is a little piece that fitted in here somewhere. But because the, uh, the background around it was so flimsy, it was really, really easy to just release it from the background like this. And then I can use that. I'll scrape out those last little bits. And uh, I can use that as an extra detail on whatever project 
I decide to use them on. Let's have a look and see what we can do with this beautiful lace panel. Now I've made an error here, this is where I uh, put the background on a little bit too thinly. So I'm going to cut that piece free. Oh, it cuts really easily, that's no problem. This is a bit that was threatening to fall off, so let's encourage that to just uh, do what it was going to do. I'll reserve that and then I'm left with this little, this little piece of lace. Now it occurred to me that if I could stick this onto a stamp block using repositionable tape, maybe I could stamp with it. So that's it on my block. I've got some black onyx R5 volt ink and let's see what happens. I mean if nothing else it's one it's another way to use an ink pad to ink up our impression. Wow, that's brilliant. I love that. That's great. I'm going to try and do that properly now. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to use the stamp the other way up. I'm going to see if I can run them together. I like that a lot. That's really good fun. So this time I'm not going to stick this to a block. I'm going to leave it as it is because it's so flexible that I can push into areas where I want more colour. And I've got three little Versicolor blocks and I'm going to add some colour to this. I won't colour the whole thing. I want to get this piece in particular, the centre of the clock, to see if that really does stand too proud to be stamped. I don't expect this to be a very sharp image, but that's not always what you want. Sometimes you want the effect. Let's see. Wow. That's pretty clever. That is really pretty clever. I told you this was fun. It may be that you decide that you will make a whole bundle of these and you'll keep them and you'll use the some of the elements in there for stamping and printing and maybe you, you add to your project with uh, some of the 3D elements, just cut them out and there's a word there, time, maybe you would cut that out and put that down the side. If this is a card, maybe put that down the side. Um, maybe not a birthday card because I don't think anybody wants to be reminded of time passing when it's their birthday, do they? So, <laughs> uh, but for other projects, and this is particularly good I think for a, a steampunk uh, project, that would be uh, terrific fun. I want to show you a way that you can make these look rusty and aged. I'm going to use some colours that I learned how to use when I attended a workshop by Andy Skinner many years ago. Now anybody who's familiar with Andy Skinner's work will know just how amazing he is at getting these sorts of effects with paints. So I want to show you the colours that we used if not the exact technique that he showed us how to use. And I'm going to start with another of these rather steampunk style effects and um, we're going to begin by painting it black. Here's the mould. I've painted this black. I haven't used black gesso because although I know that the gesso will work and will hold further layers of paint, I wanted to see if black acrylic paint would do the job as well. I think it will and that's what I've used to paint this. I've used a lamp ebony black and this is an acrylic paint from Deco Art. The reason that I've used uh, an acrylic paint, a black acrylic paint, is because I don't want to assume that you've got black gesso in your stash and I think you're more likely to have black paint, um, acrylic paint, than black gesso. I think this will give this uh, project enough tooth and we won't need to worry about things um, not drying. So I'm going to let this dry and then I'll show you how we do that wonderful rust effect. Our mould that's been painted black is just about dry and I'm going to add 
layers of colour now. The two that I'm going to add are Burnt Sienna and Quinacridone Gold. Both of these are from Deco Art, and I'll provide links to them below the video. These are the two specific colours that I learned how to do this technique with when um, I learned it from uh, Andy Skinner. I also have a cloth because we want to use as dry a brush as possible. And a word about the brush that I'm using, it's the cheapest of the cheapest brushes I could find. Because I'm not a fine artist, I don't paint watercolours, I just use paint to, to splat into mixed media projects, so I don't buy expensive brushes. I'm going to start with Burnt Sienna. I'm going to put a little splat of that on my mat, and I'm going to make sure that my brush is pretty dry. And then I'm going to pick up some of the paint and I'm going to dab it into the little nooks and crannies of our project. I'm not going to paint it like this all over, I'm just adding splatches, that's a good word, splatches of colour. I'm going to let that dry. Now that this has dried, I'm going to add my final layer, which is quinacridone gold. I'll show you how much of this I'm going to use because it's not a lot. Quite a small spot. I'm going to do the same as I did before, damping it onto the impression. I'm not going into every single part of this. I want it to go in patches because that's how rust happens. It happens in patches, it's not evenly spread. And I'm going to call that done. And I'm going to let it dry. My mould is now dry. All of that paint has dried. It's very dark. I don't know how much you'll be able to see on camera. But I'm going to show you now how we pull the whole thing into relief by adding some gold wax. The one that I'm using, this is a gilding wax from Pebio, it's called Renaissance Gold. And to apply it, I usually just take the stuff from the lid and I've got a dry tissue. I take the stuff from the lid and just dab it onto the end of my finger and then I knock some of it off because we don't want too much going on to our image as a sort of a splat. <laughs> and then just pick up the raised areas. Don't pick up all of them. Don't go crazy and think you have to do the whole thing gold. I've done that. And it just comes out looking a bit gold rather than rusty. Because what we want to do is just highlight some of these areas. And you should be able to see how that comes out there. I've left quite a few dark areas, but that's making a really nice effect. I also said that I was going to highlight the raised areas, but in this piece you can see I have some on the edge, on the flat pieces. This shows it better, this little corner. I want to just go around these edges. And this is why it's a good idea to keep these edges on. Don't cut these off. And as you apply the gold wax, everything, all of the colours seem to be picked up. That's as much as I'm going to do to this with the gold wax. Next I'm going to buff this a little and it will really take on a sheen. Once I had my impression coloured up and ready, you should be able to see where I cut around the various cogs and wheels to make sure that I captured the words time machine and I got all the little cogs that would fit into my card. And there's a space at the top. The space at the top is a piece of white card and to colour that up I did some inking with some soft brown inks and then I took 
the remains, the bits that I had cut away, uh, I took those and I did some very, very rough stamping on those. And I just stamped them up with a dark brown and a sort of a reddy brown that would fit with the kind of colours that I'd used to make my background here. So I stamped those. Then I took a Stamperia stamp. Uh, I've looked all over this and I can't find a name for it. It's text. It's just a plain text. And I stamped a little of that with some brown ink onto the background. It's very subtle, but it's just a little of it you can see peeping out. I took my cut down piece and I glued it onto the front of my card and then I backed everything with a piece of black card and that pulls together the whole design. There's a space up here ready to make a sentiment or add whatever uh, text you might want to add. Maybe you've got a stamp that would be um, that would have some words on it that you'd want to add to that. And I also have some pieces left over. I have the clock. The clock is fabulous. So I have the clock left over and I can use that to make another card and I could maybe do something in a top corner and have my text and space down here so I'd reverse how this one looks. I have some fragments left over and these are the fragments that I can use to do the stamping on any other cards I want to do associated with this, uh, this mould. I hope you found that useful. I will be sharing more projects as I make them using the Stamperia impression moulds and the cream paste because I found it great fun to work with. I really like this deep uh, texture that you can achieve and the way it colours up so readily. I've got another project that I will be sharing next and it is a card. It is this project here. Do look out for that. In the meantime I'm going to say Thank you very much for watching, thank you for your time as always, and until we meet again, take care.